Studio Fodile, thanks for joining us on Channels Book Club. Thank you very much, Kunle. Okay, now, um, from your book, you try to trace the, the history of Biafra, um, politics of Biafra, politics and history <coughs> of Biafra. <coughs> now, I keep wondering, why is there no agreement, a national agreement on what actually led, you know, to the first coup and then whether or not there was a pogrom and attempts at genocide, you know, um, and I was looking for that in your book. It seems clear from your writing that you, are, you believe there was a pogrom, you believe there was genocide, you, you don't believe that the first coup was an Igbo coup. And you believe that the second coup was a retaliation based on the perception that the first coup was an Igbo coup. So it was like a retaliation, yeah. like a revenge coup. Uh, are those correct observations of mine? Oh, very correct. Here? Very, very correct. Because if the uh, January 1966 coup, if it wasn't tagged an Igbo coup, there would have been no justification for the counter coup of July. And that is why those who uh, carried out the counter coup uh, would, you know, forever insist that the January coup was an Igbo coup because that was the basis for the counter coup. If it wasn't an Igbo coup, there would have been no justification. For the July for the counter coup. coup, for the July coup. So, but what uh, the protagonists of this uh, uh, Ibuku thesis, what they conveniently ignore is the role of then uh, Lieutenant Colonel Emeka Ojuku, who was commander of the 5th Battalion in Kano, that he was opposed to the coup from the very beginning, from its announcement to the end. And perhaps that was what earned him the position of governor of Eastern Nigeria when uh, Agui Irunsi eventually took over power. Then that is one. Then of course, Irunsi himself, who was not part of the coup, they all acknowledge that he wasn't part of the coup, but th th there seems to be, they create this conspiracy theory that how did he manage to escape and then end up becoming the head of state? So these are just circumstantial. So they tried to link it up. Clearly, the coup, the, 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 most of those involved were Igbo people. Then, of course, those who stopped the coup itself, who frustrated it, were Igbo, Ironsi and um, Ojuku. So when you juxtapose that, put these things, instead of just insisting on one uh, aspect of the whole thing, you will see clearly that it wasn't an Ibuku. And of course, the, the, if you look at the, the intellectual content of that coup, its origin is clearly in Ibadan, University of Ibadan. That's the source of the entire idea. Mm. I was also, I, I mean, I was also caught up in the many characters mm. in, in your book as you, as you narrated your, your ideas on Biafra, the many characters, na national, well-known characters. <laughs> and I think you are going to get in trouble with some of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, let me read from page 15. You said, the Federalists belong to the Nam Diazikwe School of Thoughts, and the separatists belong, I mean, to the Emeka Ojuku school of thought. Basically, you, de you describe two schools of thought, mm. um, the separatists and the federalists. So there are Igbos who believe that Nigeria should, that Biafra should come out of Nigeria and stand alone, the separatists, the Namde Kanos. Yes. And then there are Igbos who say, look, within Nigeria, Biafra can have some kind of um, semi-independence, so they say restructure Nigeria and let the federating units, you know, be loose and free and all that. So the federalists, mm -hmm. the Zik movements, yeah. the separatists, mm -hmm. the Nandekano school of thought, you know, the Ojuku, Ojuku mm -hmm. primarily. Where do you stand? Are, are you in the Zik school or the Ojuku school? 
Well, it, the, the, um, it's an interesting uh, uh, situation as uh, you, you just uh, painted. The, it depends on the period. Okay. Now, during the period of crisis leading to the dec declaration of war, Zeke and Ojuku were on the same side. Up till Aburi, and then the, uh, after Aburi and the declaration of war, the early years of Biafra, Zeke and Ojuku were on the same side, ideologically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then up till sometime late 1968, when, because up till that time, there was still negotiations going on after the declaration of Biafra. Biafra and Nigeria, they were still trying to negotiate under the ages of the OAU, uh, heads of state, and all kinds of groups coming, trying to broker peace. Up to the end of 1968, when Ojukuna made the proclamation that Biafra's sovereignty was not negotiable. It was at that point that Zeke now uh, left and went on exile to London. So if you take the circumstances of that period, you will see that if I were in Biafra at that time, I would not have gone with Zik. You would have gone with the Juku? Yes. Because of the circumstances. Okay. But now, today, yes, IPOP demonstrators are being killed. Unarmed demonstrators being killed. But as bad and as horrible as it is, it is not the same thing as bombs dropping on, you know, women and children as was taking place in 1968. So the point is that the, the, the engagement process should be different. The, the interesting thing is that today, Zeke and Ojuku would have been on the same side. Will they? Yes, because the, the question now should be, are we interested in creating a semi-autonomous unit within Nigeria to have federating units, maybe six federating units or whatever number, or do you want a separate state?